I was a crappy person at 175k. So in my mind, I'm like, dude, if I make a million dollars a year, you'll be a horrific. I'm gonna be a really bad person. <laughs> Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome to a very special life coach episode of Fung Bros Food. We have a delicious spread right Woo! here and we are with a very, very, very special guest. Kevion, yo, thank you so much Let's for being go. here, man. Thank you guys, man. Thank Let's you. go. Between streetwear, the skate world, the real estate world, and now the life coaching world, man, you're touching on everything. Thank you guys, man. At the end of the day, for me, it's just about helping people move, period, right? Like one of the slogans is inspired to move. So I'm just inspired to help people get to the next level in life. Life coaching is something that we've kind of been curious about. And I think that this is kind of a new term. My first person who ever, I told that person I was a life coach to was my best friend Jonas who started LRG. Like he introduced me to Kanye as his life coach. And, and now Kanye probably got a life coach. Get out of me around. Kanye! This is also your friend Ross's spot, this right? Ross's spot. He's an amazing Filipino chef. You're also half Filipino. I am, I'm awesome in the Philippines. All right, so let's get life coached. Let's, let's, go. let's go. Now, a lot of you may not know who Kevion is, but you're about to find out. He's somebody that us and Richie have actually been following for years now, starting from his humble beginnings in the skate and streetwear world like LRG, to now being successful in real estate and life coaching. You see a lot of gurus out there, but when you meet somebody cool and relatable, you end up taking their words with a little bit more weight. So watch us as we get some badly needed life coaching eat some delicious food and hopefully after this you feel like you got life coach too this morning was a uh, day 139 of starting every single day doing something positive for my mind body and soul I did 200 day challenges last year the first one I ran a 5k every day and then I came up with a thousand mile challenge on a bike Let's have Chef down. Ross come in here right. and explain Woo! to us. How are you doing, man? Up, buddy? So here we have our hamachi, puffed okay. rice, uh, panzu gelé. This is our fried rice pork cheek adobo. Our albacore tostada is one of our signature dishes. It's seared with a Korean chili pepper. Then we got our mussels. Our mussels, it has a Filipino longanisa sausage, soft egg raviola, uh, fresh ricotta cheese, that. crispy guanciale. So we have our mushrooms, and it has a uh, an oyster sauce and furry cocky on top. A lot of different flavors, a lot of different influences yeah. here, man. Absolutely. What is it about the challenges? Because I see my friends who are like really motivational doing yeah. the challenges. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> Kev, I no. can't do them, bro. No. Do it, I don't get the discipline, bro. Do it, dog. For me, I don't think it was in my natural DNA to be successful, truly. Like if I look at my upbringing, you know, my father went to prison at a very early age. I moved out of my house when I was 13 years old. And it's funny, I asked my mom, like, were you not tripping? Like, right. how did you let me move out? And she's like, I don't know, you just went to your friend's house and you kind of just stayed there. So I got to do whatever I wanted. Waking up and working out and being disciplined is not a natural part of like, it's just that you reach a point and you realize that we all want freedom. We want financial freedom. We want the freedom to do what we want, when we want. The funny paradox though is that discipline is what creates freedom. To me, I just know that if I really want something, it's gonna take discipline. And I always remember that if I always do what I've always done, I'm always gonna get what I've always got. So the key to really growth, in my opinion, is getting uncomfortable. You breaking through that is what's gonna get you to the next level. How we are in one area is how we are everywhere. So I'll try to implement a discipline in an area outside of business knowing that it's gonna impact my business. And so that's where the 100 day challenges came in. But on the path to doing something for 100 days straight, you're about, you are you are guaranteed to hit some situations where it's like, this dude, I'm not doing it. I mean, my grandfather passed away in my first 100 day 5K challenge. And I had been up for two days, I was wearing the same clothes, and I get home at 11 o'clock at night, and my wife was like, look, uh, I just feel like I have to tell you this, but it is day 80. I was so mad, dude. I was so mad. I went to 24 Hour Fitness and I'm literally crying. Because in my running, I go through this process of acceptance and gratitude. And in mile two, the physical being kicked in of what I'm used to feeling, which is gratitude. And if I did not push myself like that, then that was the best run of all. That's why I do the challenges. 
It's all about saying this to yourself. No, yes, I will. Anything you want to do, from as high as you want to take this show, in our minds, we, we'll be like, uh, I don't know. You know, and so the two words that I try to, to, to battle are, well, why not? Success is just a game of, of beating and overcoming that negative belief system saying like, I don't know, dude, I don't know. So the more you break through these walls and prove to yourself, like, I can do this. You gotta beat the doubt. You gotta beat the doubt. A lot of Asian parents, they tell their kids, uh, don't do this, mm -hmm. don't do that, stay safe, blah, 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 blah. There's so much fear right. instilled in us. How do you get people to take risks and not be afraid? It's like, I think about my wife, you know, my wife is Filipino, both of her parents are Filipino, and she had a major passion for, for art and makeup. Her, it was very common for her dad to be like, okay, well, when that fails, make sure you get back to medical school. Right. Like, like, when like, is almost like, assuming like, that it's zero not, right? belief in her whatsoever that she was going to do that. But I just come from a different cloth of like, if you want to do that, you can absolutely do it. And so sure enough, she started to build her, her blog. You know, within like two years, she's getting paid 1500 bucks a day to do weddings and it became this whole thing. I think it's a battle of knowing like what your heart is telling you and what the world is telling you. Whether that's your parents or your boss or your teacher, if your heart is telling you like, man, I gotta do this thing, it, it is a battle. It's a battle of listening to it. But I, I do believe that like we're all incredible, blessed creatures of God and I believe absolutely that we're all, every single one of us are meant to be extraordinary. But we have to be able to listen to that thing. Because if we get caught up listening to the world, uh, we'll get lost. Everybody has such a different meaning of success mm -hmm. and a different definition. When you're coaching people, I guess are you co coaching people in a conventional way to become like a conventional superstar? Or you're like, nah man, like that's all good. If you wanna be like, as a UPS driver, right? Yeah. But then you gotta, your life popping outside of that. Yeah. Like, that, that's like, that's a superstar life too. And it's in a, not as obviously ballerific, you know, conventional. Yeah. Right there is the number one thing that I work with people on, is helping them see that not only are they the most extraordinary human being ever right now and that they have every single thing that they need to break through the next level right now, but today, I don't care if you got your car repoed, I don't care if you got fired, get over the make-believe story that you're not a fucking legend and today is not the greatest day ever. The whole goal is to reach this next level, always. But the challenge is many times when we think about the goal, it causes us to feel like we don't have it. In order to reach the goal, we have to match the energy of who you will be when you're at the goal. You want to you want to reach this level until you become that person at that level. You're always going to be operating like you don't have it. And as soon as you realize you you are that thing, you are that person, you now match the energy of the person who has a Grammy, who has the car. Like, dude, hip hop is the ultimate example of the law of attraction and goal setting. It's somebody who is playing the ultimate game of these three words. And it's be, do, have. When you realize that you are the person without the diploma, that you are the person without the record deal, you're now able to do things at a higher level, which is gonna cause you to operate and actually have those things you're thinking about. Versus have, do, be. Like, all right, when I have two million subscribers, when I have the car, well then I'll be that person. Like, no man, you're that person like right now. What, what do you think of the guy who's like, yo, success to me is not having all the, you know, the trappings. One of my cousins swears that if you make more than 75,000, you're, you know, they say that people who make above 75,000 are unhappy or something. There's some weird thing that she read. It's her belief system that causes her to not make more than 75,000 a year. There's nothing wrong with somebody who stays at 50K a year and they are <coughs> totally, they're, they're totally happy at that. But I would say that at some point, I think they're going to feel like something's missing. Because I think that our purpose of living is to experience joy and to grow. And so where should we be growing? I think we should always be growing mentally, always be growing physically, always be growing spiritually, always be growing within our family and our core relationships, always be growing within our circle of friends, and always be growing within business and money. Why would I only be rich in these five areas, but when I get to money, I'm like, eh, I'm just gonna chill right here. Why would I do that? Well, I think people <coughs> view where they think the second they start chasing that sixth mm -hmm. thing to be rich in, 
it's gonna compromise the other things. And I'll tell you, it did for me. So I made my first six figures when I was 19. I never went above 200K uh, for, for a decade. And what happened was is my personal belief system about money was ineffective. My dad taught me that when you get money, you need to get rid of it as fast as possible before it gets taken away. Okay. So I had earned like close to a million dollars by the time I was 26, 27 years old with nothing to show for it. I didn't own a home. I had a, a watch and a seven series with some 22s and that's about it, <laughs> which later got repossessed. The way I related to money was not in a way that taught me how to make it grow because I didn't have the right belief system about it. I was a crappy person at 175K. So in my mind, I'm like, dude, if I make a million dollars a year, you be a horrific I'm gonna be a really <laughs> bad person. But when my dad passed away in 2012, a lot of things really shifted for me. And I really started to pay attention to how I related to money and how my relationship to money was ineffective. And it was a story. And I started to change my conversation about money and what money meant to me from it's just this thing to celebrate and buy stuff to it's an opportunity to improve the lives around me. In three years, I went from never elevating above uh, 200,000 in income. And as soon as I changed that in a three year period, I made a million dollars in three years. And year four, I made a million dollars in one year. People who view money as security tend to, they don't, they tend to, think of ways to spend less and not make more. Yeah. And when you make that statement like, I wanna make money to make the lives around me better, it's it's the less selfish motivation of I wanna ball out and now I gotta make it for these people that I love. And I, it's essentially a family, I mean. Um, I'd say that's 50% of it. The other 50% of it was my personal beliefs of why I deserve to make a million dollars a year change the story that you tell change yourself story, about man. money? Yeah, take a look at the, and maybe, maybe you don't have the story that I did, but take a look at how do you view your relationship with money? So Sorry guys. <laughs> please please, please tell us what we're looking at. Dang. So, uh, garlic fried rice, house made Filipino longanisa. This is our house made agnolotti, spicy tomato sauce on the bottom, ricotta cheese, Ooh, salmon really belly. Good. Um, we got a dashi. Soba noodles, and then our uh, New York steak. Ooh. Got uh, some cream corn, Dang, potato dude. terrine, uh, lemon espaleta emulsion. I have a lot of family members who, for some reason, they have like a negative feeling about what money is. You know, you hear these things like, money is the root of all evil. You know, the love of money is the root of all evil. That's the actual quote in the Bible, the love yeah. of money. I truly didn't really think I was somebody worthy of, of maintaining my money. I had a lot of like deep-rooted issues about myself and my personal worth. Self-identity. It's relatable when for a lot of people. When I was five years old, this thing happened. Um, when I told myself, I labeled myself, I'm worthless. Dude, and I kept that thing going. Um, even till this day, things happen and this five-year-old Kev, mm -hmm. and I have to check myself like, no dude, you are, you are worth. Many people, something happens when you're a kid and you spend your whole life trying to cover up this thing that happened. Mm -hmm. Did you ever do therapy? Oh, I've done, dude, I've had so many therapists, it's not even funny. So do you recommend therapy? Because that's something I've been yeah, thinking about. Like, therapy. Because you know like in a lot of like immigrant communities, that's just like, you I go to the therapist, it, you're like, it's you're very crazy. Taboo. It's taboo, we don't no. want to talk, oh, therapy, oh. something's wrong with you. Dude, I call it coaching. So my I'm wife a, and I I'm have a therapist, coach. and we call it our marriage coaching. Our, our financial advisor, that's our money coach. You know, our church groups, that's our spiritual coaching. All about having people around you who are at a higher level or, or, or they have not they have an extra set of eyes that maybe you don't have that can look at the problem because they're a specialist in that thing. But I'm not a therapist, you know, so I call myself a coach. A real estate coach, I'm a life coach. If we could go through and you could give us some very quick, I don't know if it, coaching works this way, some quick on-the-fly micro coaching mm -hmm. for fun bros. So I started coaching Jonas when I was 17, 18, and it went from coaching Jonas, and then next thing you know, Jonas brought, the, the LRG company at that time was literally like four people. Because he didn't have written down goals before we met, right? But why did he have LRG then? Why did he have this thing going? Because 
in his core of who he was. I've gone back and, and looked at his school papers when I visit his parents. He has this school book, uh, this school report that he did, and he wanted to start a clothing company. Dude, the whole vibe, the whole energy of this clothing company that he wanted to create, it looked like LRG, it just wasn't called LRG. When you know where you're going, the universe is like, how about this? So the universe just connected him and I because I had these things that could help him solidify his vision. He was gonna get there regardless, is my personal belief. Because if I wasn't the one that the universe connected with it, him with, it would have been somebody else. So goal setting is about getting clear on the direction that you want your life to go. Because without goals, you're a ship in the middle of the ocean without a rudder. And so goal setting is all about saying, what do I want? And the seven equities is a way to take that a whole level further. There's all kinds of ways of writing goals. I think the magic behind taking what you want to do and just freaking putting that shit on paper is so powerful. What should they write down? Number one, I say go to a time. You don't put a goal, a, a deadline on your, your your goal. It's not really a goal. Right, you have, just, to, okay. you have to date it. Like, yeah, when are these goals going down? All right, look, I'm gonna do it right now, yep. live. December 31st, 2019. And what I want you to do is I want you to actually not go from where you're at today to there. I want you to go there and work backwards. You know, there's a reason why your, your your front windshield is so big and your rear view mirror is so small. Right. It's about looking as forward. big as possible forward. In terms of mindset, do you want to read a certain amount of books? Is there something you want to learn, right? Your mindset is, is your mind, what you think about yourself, your education. So what you can do to improve your mindset. I guess for me, being a, a little bit of the new school, I can't, it's hard for me to sit down and read sometimes, man. So same same way, dude. Like, so do you do the, you more listen to podcasts? Like, what do you do? Audio books. My mindset goals, one of the things are, uh, I'll put disciplines in mind. So one of my mindset goals is to read my affirmations three times a day. Affirmation and affirmations are what? So an affirmation the... is whatever you tell yourself about yourself. You say, I know without a shadow of a doubt that I'm absolutely going to crush this today. That's an affirmation. Dude, like, the homie drama reads a book a week. I don't know how he does that. I read like a book every other month. So for me, one of my goals are to to complete uh, complete one book a month. That's one of my mindset goals. Your ego is gonna say, ah, that's why it's hard to do this. Right. Like, ah. And this is why people don't write goals is because when you're doing this, you're all right. I'm gonna do this. Your brain's like. No, 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 you right. can't do it. It's gonna be uncomfortable, that's gonna yeah. be breaking you know, for the yeah, routine. Gonna oh, that's gonna take a lot of time. Oh, you know, right. you know what I mean? And so, your ego's not your amigo. You gotta be like, hi, ego, thank you for stopping by. I like that shit down anyways, dude. That's what keeps us small. The three letter word, how? How am I gonna run a marathon? How am I gonna become a millionaire? How am I gonna buy a dream house? You gotta that's remember it, my mentors, what do you do with ancient that? Vietnamese proverb. P H U K H A U. That's how. <laughs> when you're writing your goals, don't trip on the how. Don't worry about the how. Just write it down, dude. Okay. Figure we're just it out. dreaming right now. Dude, we're, we're just, just like, coming up with our life's dream movie. Because we're just saying, yo, that'd be tight. That'd be tight. Right? That's what you're saying. You're, 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 this is the script for your movie, dude. God. We don't have the producers yet. Right. We don't have the actors yet. We don't have the financing yet. We don't have the cameras yet. It's all good. I'm just trying to create Star Wars right now. But my boy, Charlie was 2 Chainz manager. He told 2 Chainz, you know, I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be an athlete. 2 Chainz, I'm sure like, hey, come on bro. Mm -hmm. But that was his dream. It's what he believed it was, was possible to do. And in a year, he lost 120 pounds. He biked across America. He did a freaking Ironman in New Zealand or something. And he landed on a Nike commercial. Nobody would no. bet on this guy. No. But he, 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 he bet on himself. You know, and I think when you, when you know that just us being here on this planet, we're incredible creatures, dude. Like, I have the things that I want to do, and God's like, that's it. So I know that if my, my goals and my heart's in the right place, God's like, I got your back, Kev, but that's it. That's all you want. Okay. Don't compare yours to mine or to his. These are your goals. Right. And this is your breakthrough. Right, you know, right. so then you do the same thing and you go to family. 
What would be the dream experience with your family? Remember, here's how you want to operate with each of these areas. What would make this the best year of my life? Oh, I wanted to take a life-changing trip uh, back to Asia with my That's family. That's exactly what I was going to say. Here's the magic question. Who do I have to be? To fly first class. Okay. You know what I mean? Because that's a difference of a $900 ticket and a $3,000 ticket. When you are saying, yo, just write it down. It's going to be cool. Like, that's what you want to do. And, and, and mine's like, no, 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 don't write yeah, it. No, yeah. no, 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 play smaller. Be yeah. smaller. Don't go that big. You got to remember. Plus, like, I mean, everybody's watching us do this, so now it's almost like pressure's on. It feels like that's and how. Now you want a picture that insta you want to take this clip when you guys are talking about this you want to picture the insta with mom and pop's feet kicked up in, in the little class. in the little, little cubby thing, thing where you get <laughs> when you get the lean back yeah sick dude Exciting, then you go man. into social right what do you want to do socially what's that experience do you want to throw some big event do you want to do some crazy party do you want to find your dream girl dude 2004 i got out of a relationship on my birthday 2004 and that was April 23rd. Five days later, my mom was like, how come you're so detailed with all of your other goals, your money goals, what kind of car you want to drive, what kind of shoes you want, how come you're not like that in your relationships? And I was like, ah, that is different. She's like, no, it's not. Why don't you start being as detailed as you are with your money and your business? Why don't you start being like that with your relationship? April the 28th, I write down my dream qualities in a girl. I wrote down trustworthy, I wrote down passionate about something, I wrote down strong family values, and then I wrote down the names of these two kind of famous people, I won't say on camera. Uh, <laughs> if you take those two names and you mesh them together, my wife is like an improved version of both of them put together. In between April the 28th and Cinco de Mayo, I'm in this skate shop and I see this magazine and on the cover of it, I was like, oh my gosh. I see this girl, and her name is Alana. When I looked at that magazine, I was like, dang, she totally looks like these two names that I wrote down. I got the magazine, I took it home, and I put her face next to these five things that I wrote down. I go to a party on Cinco de Mayo, I didn't want to leave my house. It's like all being weird and emo. And my buddy's like, dude, come on, just come on. Yeah. And whatever. I drive to this party and I'm leaving the party on Cinco de Mayo 2004. And I look. And I was like, hello? It's crazy. She texts me. I drove home that night. I shouldn't have driven home that night. And she texts me in the morning and it said a lot. I was like, oh my gosh. She texts me, hey, did you get home okay? And you know, I did a good, I did, this was my trick at that time. I text her, uh, who is this? You know what I mean? Yeah, I knew cool, who it was. Right? Yeah. yeah. Five dates later. <laughs> it took me five dates just to even like get a kiss, man. She was, I got denied five times in a row. I took her to like really nice dates. She wasn't having it. And now we're married. 14 years in. Amen. Now now when someone hears that story, they're like, is that is that magic? Is that God? Is it laws of attraction? How do you explain that to someone who's just like I like, could I could tell you ten other examples just like that from my house to cars to vacations. It, it's all I got. Did, like this belief system that we become what we think about. This belief system that we become what we think about is truly all I have got. It's what I base my whole life on. The the waves of your 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 mind go out three feet. The waves that you we're all energy, but the waves of your heart go out seven feet. So when something is really in your heart and you're, you're radiating it over and over and over and over and over, you're sending out signals. Like a little if you're radar. always attracting jerks in your life, you should just kind of look at what kind of energy you're putting out. It's the same way I attract the perfect parking spot everywhere I go. All goal setting is, is getting your mind and your heart to think about what you want. You will get it. You're getting it already. If you break down your whole life, everything you've had is because of Every single thing, every single thing you have, what you don't have, the trials, the tribulations, the breakdowns, the breakthroughs you've gone through is because in your mind and in your heart you felt a certain way and you brought that into your experience. And if you want to live higher, then change your mind and change your heart. If you want to live the same, don't do anything. If you want to attract a whole bunch of breakdown and trials and tribulations and drama, watch the news and hang out with negative people. That'll happen. You absolutely ruin it. But it, it's not. None of it is by accident. You know, like I have my, I have, I own my two dream companies. 
my freaking children, how incredible my children are. From our house, I'm not saying there's not challenges. I deal with breakdowns and challenges, but when I really look at like, how the hell did this happen? It's unreal. Right, right. And it is only because I took the time to say, what do I want? And I overcome that bullshit thing in my head that said, no, you can't have that. And I'm like, yes, I can. That's why I do these challenges to Sorry. beat and battle my right. ego. If you can learn to train your mind that you can do anything you put your mind to, well then cool, let me see how big I can play then. Let me see how big I can concoct this, this dream life in my mind. But where does it start? It starts right there, by putting what's in your mind on paper. For money, do you encourage people to have just like, uh, is, it a, is it an income goal, passive income goal, is it just a total gross, so, uh, is it a net amount at the end of the year? Or? So I go, Business, then money. Business is your career. It's what you do to make money. Money is what you actually do with it. One of my goals this year is to sell 100 homes. Okay. Right? Well, what do I actually earn from selling 100 homes? That's like, you know, $3 million, something like that. That is only in my business goal. So, so business goals for me are, you know, reach 100,000 views, and listens, it plays on each podcast. Um, sell a hundred homes. And then remember, go big as you possibly can. I guess it would be all the crap is like 20 million views a month. Sick. Sick, <laughs> dude. Oh, yeah. Lot, yeah. But I, yeah. I don't know. How, I'm scared to put it down. Should I put it down or should I be like... Here's the thing. It's whatever you feel. It, you don't want to be able to know 100% that you could do it also. You want to be able to like, damn, I think I can do it. You know what I mean? But it should be a stretch. Because this is just the first layer. We want to go further layers into this. But this is layer number one. All right. 20 million views a month. Though. Okay. This is just the first layer. Woo! This is just the skeleton script. So that's on, that's on business. So that's on business. Money is different. Money is what you want to earn and how you want to make that money grow. I guess I would say uh, start to have some real footing in I guess like a, a, a business world outside of like just what my career is. So for business, you're saying you want to begin Good. making, you know, start making um, some moves in other industries is what you're saying. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I will say that the more specific you are, the better. And usually the only thing that's stopping you from being specific is those two things, fear and doubt. I would like to own something that creates some residual income yeah. that's not related to YouTube. Dude, that's amazing. That's a great goal. Own something that creates residual income outside of YouTube. Mm. That sounds like an income property to me. Spirituality. Yep. So spirituality and then so also what the way I write my goals is the first three are mental, physical, and spiritual. Can, we, can I get back to it? Let's get back to it. <laughs> I will tell you, this is spiritual was the one that uh, I honestly don't feel like I tapped into until 2016. And that uh, happened right after I relapsed, actually. Why did I do that? You know, and I went back to the seven equities and it was like, okay, uh, mindset, check, killing it. Physical, I'm running, check, killing it. Spiritual, uh, I'll just skip that one. Family, killing it. Social, killing it. Business, killing it. Money, killing it. That area, I always just avoided. I never really dove into like, who was my creator? And since I started doing that and spending time in the word and in these practices, like my sobriety's been easy, I'm more at peace. And so I definitely encourage people to like, explore that, whatever that might mean for you. Why do you think that is the one? Cause you know, it's funny that you just, I, cause I just skipped it. I skipped it. And so the weird part for me, why would I risk everything? And I went deep. I mean, it was a Wednesday night, it was four in the morning, I'm by myself, mm -hmm. I'm DJing, I'm not taking my aunt, my wife's calls, I got all this stuff next to me <laughs> that I should not be doing. Why was I, what was I trying to fill up? Well, what I was trying to, when I had everything, I just bought my dream house. Well, the reality is all that shit didn't make me happy. What really makes us happy is when we're in tune with ourselves. And that doesn't happen automatically, you know what I mean? And so, since then, April 29th, 2016, 
I've really been working on my relationship with God spiritually, and obviously my sobriety. This this April for me is three years straight. So after you do this, you got your goals. Turn them into affirmations and just put I boom. And now you got your affirmation. You just put an I in front you of your goal. You put an I in front of it, dude. That's all it is. Every time you see it, your ego's like, no, you're not going to do it. And then you see it again. And before you know it, you start to believe it. And as soon as you start to believe it, guess what? I call it manifest prime. When you know your goals are coming, dude, get out of the way. Like, it's on its way. Just like Amazon Prime, but it's manifest prime. Whatever you write down, if it's not coming, it's only because you don't believe it. Wow, it's gonna happen, dude. If you believe it, I can't believe it. You have to right, believe it. Right. I, I believe it, truly. You don't have to necessarily have a plan for it right now. I would recommend having the plan. De definitely have Here's a plan. Here's the thing about the plan. When you plan it, what it does is it gives you conviction and confidence that it's coming. But it might come a different way. It might not come how I plan. Totally. The plan gives you the conviction to set everything in motion. <clears throat> come on, and guys, if you said it, you just said it. You did, you did. I'm done. We're done, dude. All right, we're done. Yo. So you could take these goals, <coughs> you could turn them into. You know, you now know how to turn them into affirmations. For all the viewers, I think an important thing to reference to people is that like, we don't have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. I just believe that whatever you tell yourself over and over is gonna happen. And the quote of the year last year is a dream written down with a date becomes a goal. A goal broken down into steps becomes a plan. Okay. And a plan backed by action becomes reality. That's it. And that's how to make your dreams happen. That's it. That sounds Yo, simple. Man. I think it is simple. I think it is simple. With my upbringing, my education, I'm the last person that should have the life that I have. But somebody hooked me up with these gems and they work and I believe in them. And that's why I do all the stuff that I do for free. I got hooked up from my mom, from my mentor Thatch, from all these books. So I'm trying to bottle all this stuff up and give it to our community because I really do feel it is the secret to living an incredible life. Hey man, I got man. I got chills down on my back. Yeah, we ate, dude. Let's between go. the Let's between go. brother, man. The inspiring Let's words, go. the encouragement. Don't trip about the how when it comes to writing down your goals. It's like trying to make a movie without even writing the script. One year goals. Break your one year goals down into quarters, which is 90 days. Okay. Then take your quarterly goals and break it down into months. Mm -hmm. Then take your monthly goal and break it down into weeks. Then take your weekly goal and break it down into days. You're gonna see, you're gonna look at this thing and be like, oh shit, I, 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 I could do that today. Do uh... Like that one thing today, and then you do it today, and then again, and again, and next thing you know, you look back and you're like, Damn, I came a long way. <laughs> I think that the biggest takeaway for me, for you today, you dropped so much knowledge, so many gems, is that to work your way backwards. Mm. Add it up and then work your way backwards. I think for the longest time I was goal setting, like, dude, I gotta listen to one every day, and you miss a couple days, and yeah. you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah. like this is it. So you operate from the future to today. And then from this place of today, just look at, what do I gotta do to kill it in the next hour? How do I kill it in this hour? because anxiety comes from tripping on the past and tripping on the future. So you wanna have the big future in mind and be inspired about it, but now that you're inspired in the present, all right, what do I gotta do in the next hour? Um, where, where can people find your stuff? My Insta is probably one of the best ways, at Kevion, K-E-V-I-O-N. A lot of good bits on the Insta. A life coach to me is somebody who truly just sets a great example of how to live. We're all life coaches. We're all teachers. The question is, what are we teaching people? Hey, I got a life coach. This is my first Yo, time. This is my first session. Great session. Got, great session. Great we got session. life Thank coach. You so much. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for watching that video. Definitely check out Kevion's stuff. We'll leave all the links down below. I'll pop it up in the title. Shout out to Terrace by Mix Mix. Chef Ross here at the South Coast Killed Plaza it. Mall. Thanks for watching that video. Subscribe to our channel. Give it a big thumbs up. Check out his links down below. And uh, until next time. We out. Yeah. Peace. Peace.
Yo, what's going on everybody? Thank you so much for watching that video. Uh, basically, we are gonna be releasing a lot more content that we always wanted to give you guys. We never really had a good way of doing it and that's why we wanna tell you guys that we are starting YouTube memberships. So basically, if you subscribe to the membership channel, you are gonna get tons of exclusive content. You're gonna get exclusive photos, exclusive videos. We're gonna be doing NBA talks, comments on comments. You're gonna be getting merch discounts. Basically, you can just click the join button right there. It is only $4.99 per month and it's gonna go all on our community tab right here so it's exclusive content that you're only gonna see if you're a member but I think I think you might really like it yeah we're gonna be gonna delving really like deep it. into a lot of topics and we got some thoughts man yeah deep thoughts so it's starting on January 30th so go ahead please uh, sign up today and check it out all right everybody thanks for watching that video until next time we out peace, peace.